And I, I do believe that, like, as somebody who thinks clickbait journalism is broken, journalists annoy the hell out of me. Clickbait journalism is working perfectly. <laughs> Journalism's <laughs> broken. Jour- journalism. Clickbait thing's working great. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I understand from Putin's perspective that journalism, journalists can be seen as the enemy of the state because people think journalists write these deep, beautiful philosophical pieces about criticizing the structure of government and the proper policy, what, you know, the steps that we need to take to make a greater nation. No, they they're unfairly take stuff out of context. They, uh, they're critical in ways that's like shallow and not interesting. They, they call you a racist or a sexist, or they make up stuff all the time. So I, c- I can put myself in the mindset of a person that thinks that it is okay to remove that kind of shallow, uh, fake news voice from the system. The problem is, of course, that is a slippery slope to then you remove all the annoying people from the system and then you change what annoying means, which annoying starts becoming a thing that like anyone who opposes the the system. I mean, I get I get the, um, the slippery, it's, it's obvious that it becomes a slippery slope, but I can also put myself in the mindset of the people that, See, it's, it's okay to remove the liars from the system it, it, as long as it's good for Russia. And, and Okay, so herein lies, and this again, the traditional American perspective, because we've had yellow, so-called yellow journalism since the founding of the republic. That's nothing new. Um, but, but the problem then comes into play when you remove journalists— even, you know, it, it's a broad brush thing, because but you remove both the, the crappy ones who are lying and the ones who are telling the truth, too. You're left with simply the, the approved government journalists, right? The ones who are towing the government's line, in which case the truth as you see it is a different kind of fake news, right? It's the fake news from the government instead of the clickbait news. And oh, yeah, maybe truth mixed into all that, too, in some of the outlets. The problem I always have with our system here in the United States right now is trying to tease the truth out from all the falsehoods. And look, I've got 30 years in journalism. My job used to be to go through before the internet, all the newspapers and and find that I used to know all the journalists by name and I could pick out, you know, who they were. and, 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 And I have a hard time picking out the truth from the falsehoods. So I think constantly how are people who don't have all this background, who have lives or who are trained in other specialties, how do they do it? But if the government is the only approved outlet for truth, a traditional American and a lot of other traditional societies based on these ideas of the Enlightenment that I talked about earlier would see that as a disaster waiting to happen or a tyranny in progress. Does that make sense? Uh, It totally makes sense. And I would agree with you. I still agree with you. But it is clear that something about the freedom of the press and freedom of speech in today, like literally the last few years with the internet is changing. And the argument, you know, it, you, you could say that the American system of freedom of speech is, is broken because the, here's, here's the belief I grew up on and I still hold, but I'm starting to be sort of, trying to see multiple views on it. My belief was that freedom of speech results in a stable trajectory towards truth always. So like truth will emerge. That was my sort of faith and belief that, that yeah, there's going to be lies all over the place, but there'll be like a stable thing that is true that's carried forward to the public. Now it feels like it's possible to go towards a world where nothing is true, where truth is is something that groups of people convince themselves of, and there's multiple groups of people. And the idea of some universal truth, I, I suppose is the better thing, is, uh, is something that we can no longer exist under. Like s- some people believe that the Green Bay Packers is the best uh, football team, and some people can think the Patriots, and they deeply believe it to where they call the other groups liars. Now that's fun for sports, that's fun for favorite flavors of ice cream, but they might believe that about science, about uh, about the various aspects of uh, politics, various aspects of sort of uh, different policies within the function of our government. And like, that's not just like 
some weird thing we complain about, but that'll be the nature of things. Like truth is something we can no longer have. Well, let's, and, and let me de-romanticize the American history of this too, because the American press was often just as biased, just as, I mean, I always look to the 1970s as the high watermark of the American journalistic, um, in the post-Watergate era, where it was actively going after um, uh, the abuses of the government and all these things. But there was a famous speech, very quiet though, very quiet, given by Catherine Graham, who was a Washington Post editor, I believe. And uh, I actually, somebody sent it to me. We had to get it off of a journalism, uh, like a JSTOR kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And she, at a at a luncheon, um, assured that the to the government people at the luncheon, don't worry, this is not going to be something that we make a trend. We're not because the position of the government is still something that was carried. You know, the, the the newspapers were the water, and the newspapers were the big thing up until certainly the late '60s, early '70s. The newspapers were still the water carrier of the government, right? And they were the water carriers of the owners of the newspaper. So let's not pretend there was some angelic, wonderful time. And, and I'm saying to me, because I was the one who brought it up, uh, let's not pretend there was any super age of truthful journalism and all that. And I mean, you go to the revolutionary period in American history, and it looks every bit as bad as today, yeah. right? Um, That's a hopeful message, actually. So things may not be as bad as they, as they look. Well, let's look at are... it more like a stock market and that you have fluctuations in the truthfulness or or believability of the press. And there are periods where it was higher than other periods. The funny thing about the so-called clickbait era, and I do think it's terrible, but I mean, it, it resembles <laughs> earlier eras to me. So I always compare it to when I was a kid growing up, when I thought journalism was as good as it's ever gotten. It was never perfect. Um, but it's also something that you see very rarely in, in other governments around the world. And there's a reason that journalists are often killed uh, regularly in a lot of countries. And it's because they report on things that the authorities do not want reported on. And I've always thought that that was what journalism should do. But it's got to be truthful. Otherwise, it's just a different kind of propaganda, right? Right. 